Hey animators, so in this video I'm going to cover installing and using a BH path atom. First thing to do is just install it, put it in your Maya uh, scripts folder like you would any other script really from Maya. Uh, you go into your documents, Maya, and then whatever version you're using. I'm going to use 2016 in this case. Uh, I usually, you can put it in scripts or you can put it in prefs scripts. I've put it in there already. That's the mail script. And then you come back up one level and just go to icons and put the icon in there and I've done that. Make sure you restart Maya and then it'll be ready to go. I've opened up 2016 here and I've got a walk cycle with this rig I made a while back, Leo, and he's... I'm using the global control to walk him off the spot. Um, if I mute that, he'll just be on a treadmill. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is going to launch the GUI for the tool. I just type bh and make sure I have mel set here and type bh underscore hat small p capital A even. And here we go, and that's just launched the tool, or semicolon at the end there. Uh, if you can, if you want, you can uh, just make that quicker. You can just gra drag that onto a shelf. I've already done that in this case. I've got like a, a button for it there, and you can just edit that then and just navigate to the icon for that. That's everything you need to do for installing then. And then to actually set up the system, it's designed to kind of work in four steps, four main steps. First of all, you create the path curves. Then you create the ground hooks and or the body hooks, and then you attach the rig to those hooks, and then finally you bake the animation back to the rig and delete the path system. So it's kind of a four-step process. So the first thing is you, we create the path, and in this case it's much too small for the rig. You can see the the this body path here. I sort of want that to be pretty much in line with the pivot for maybe the chest or the or the hips. So I, I know that needs to be a lot bigger. So I'm just going to type in maybe ten, and that's not too bad. And uh, what I'm going to do is actually leave that selected so I can see the pivot. And I'm going to just adjust this interactively. I'm going to hold control and just drag it here. Each time I let go, it'll update a little bit. So I'm just going to yeah, pretty much bang on the, the pivot for that control. And uh, the other thing I need to do is because I'm going to take this walk and move it forward, I need to actually take the translation away from the rig at the moment. Like it's it's this uh, global control is animated. I need to get rid of the animation. I could delete it or in this case I'm just going to mute it. So now he's just treadmilling in place. And that's what I need. Whether you're using a walk cycle or a run cycle, whatever it is, it just has to be on the world origin, facing forward in Z, because that's the way the path tool sets it up. Once you've got the character attached to the path, you can move the whole system around if you need to. But for setting it up, that's the ideal position. The other thing is, ideally, you go back to your very first frame of your animation as well and create all your hooks and that kind of stuff there. So with the path system created, the next thing I'm going to do is just create the ground and the body hooks. Uh, basically, these are sort of like little anchors that attach to either of these curves of the ground one here or the body one up higher. Uh, so the feet obviously are going to go on the ground ones. And I'm going to select pairs of feet. It's just, it's just a little bit quicker to set it up. I'm going to select the front, left and right. And I'm going to create ground hooks for selected. And it's going to show a little option here. Uh, two controllers were selected. Are these a matching pair of left right controllers? And they are. So I'm going to say yes. It just means that it's going to average out the position of those. If I can show locators, actually you'll see them. These purple locators there are, the, are what actually get attached to the path. So that's positioned right in the middle of those two controls. I'm going to do the same thing for the back feet. You can just you know do this for as many feet as you like. If you've got a spider or an insect, you can just keep going with this process. So I'm going to create uh, ground hooks for those two. Again, there's two matching controllers. One thing I should mention is about uh, pole vectors. Depending on how your pole vectors are working in your rig, if they're in world space, then you would need to add them as well. I generally just add them to the to the body or curve rather than the ground one. It doesn't really matter, but. Uh, just to be aware of that, in this case they're actually in foot space so I don't need to worry about them. Then I'm going to add the hips, the chest and the head to the body curve. So I'm going to create, create body hooks for selected. And uh, one thing to note is that if, if your head says FK only, it's still worth putting it on the, the, the curve because it will actually look along, it'll rotate even if you can't translate it. So that's pretty much it for the setup. The only other thing I need to do then is now attach the rig to those hooks that I've created. and. Um, I don't, you don't need to select the full range of your timeline. You can just, select, it's a little bit quicker if you just select whatever you've got looped. So this, this one's walk cycle here is 33 set frames. So I'm going to set this to 33. And I'm going to just press attach rig to hooks. And it's going to hide the UI while it does this because it just makes it a little bit quicker. Uh, depending on how heavy your rig is, it's pretty much there. It's just kind of playing through for each. There you go, it's done. And uh, just to show you this option here, disable view while baiting, it, it, it is a good bit faster if you enable that. It's enabled by default. And then this button here, restore the view, is just an emergency. I've never ever needed to use it, but just in case something happens, it, it doesn't work and your viewport is gone, you can just press that button to get it back. Um, so we can see there what it's done. It's, it's set up um, 
locators. Uh, I'm actually going to hide the rig controls just so we can see a little bit better what's going on. You see the, the animation looks identical, but, it's, but you've got these locators and attached to the rig. This control here, this kind of arrow, is, is the main path control. It, it stores the length of the path, it stores the offsets for the different hooks that were created, and then it has this one animatable attribute, path travel, so you can just key that. I go to frame 2, and I'll maybe try a value, maybe something 0.4 or something. That's a little bit too much, but just to have something in there to react to. So I'm going to look at that attribute, and I'm going to make it linear, because I want it to be con consistent. And I'm also going to make that curve uh, post-infinity cycle with offset. You'll see it goes off into space. If you can't see that, you just need to go to view uh, infinity. Make sure that's enabled. Um, you know, it's just a visual thing to show you that that curve is continuing on and into infinity. So now we can, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to flick back and forth between frame 1 and 2. I'm going to look for where the feet should be. I'm trying to get the feet basically to be the ones that are on the ground anyway, to stay in this in position. So I'm just going to adjust this back until, you know, you might need to zoom in on the curve here and even zoom in on this. You can go to a, into a, like an orthographic view for a little bit more accuracy, but just to keep this quick, I'm just going to do it like this. So that's, if the feet are moving forward, then, the, then it's traveling too far along the path. If they're moving back, then you need to increase the range. You spend some time finessing this, but I'm going to call that close enough for what we're doing. So that's it, he's walking on the path. I also want to mention these uh, locators. I'm just going to, actually going to hide the, uh, the geometry. Partly the reason I use this rig is because he's nice and visible, but even, even with him showing. What we have basically are um, these red locators, which I call the anim offset locators, and then these uh, yellow ones, which I call the control pivot locators. And both of these can be animated. The, uh, the control pivot ones are children of the anim offset ones, so if you move those ones, you'll move both. Um, you can think about these red ones as kind of like axles on a car almost. If I show the geometry again, um, it, when you rotate those, it'll actually rotate both feet or whatever or is, it, is attached to it from the uh, pivot point of the curve itself. Whereas the yellow ones are actually have the pivot point at the controller. So what these allow you to do is they allow you to fix things like foot slip and um, also plus the animation. If, and I won't go into that in this video, just to keep things short, but what I would suggest you, you do is watch this other video I made, How to Train Your Velociraptor, which goes through the workflow for that and demonstrates how I like to do that. So that will go into more detail on that. But one thing I should mention is that we've got more options here. Um, I find you know, I created those red locators as I thought they could be handy for some things, especially if you've got a character with a very long neck and you want to maybe have them banked like that, like a giraffe or something like that, as if you could animate this control. But I find I'm generally just animating these ones, the yellow ones. So what I did was I added an option here for hiding them. So if you want to hide the red ones, you just use that. And now you've only got the other ones, or you can hide the other ones. Just to make it a little bit more legible, there are handy options to have. And that's everything really set up. Now it's just a matter of editing the curve to control where it goes. So we just go into the curve. I hit B to enable soft selection and then change the radius. And you'll see straight away he's kind of looking along the curve. Uh, and, you know, depending on how much you edit it, you will get some foot slip, of course, on the, on the outside and the inside of the curve because the legs will be moving at a different rate. But um, it gives you a very quick way to kind of get the character moving through space and then you can kind of finesse it then and say using the methods I discussed in that other video. But one thing you can do to kind of gently clean things up once you've added to the curb is you can go back to this uh, path anim control and look at this value here, path length. That's changed now because I've stretched the curve a little bit. I actually open the graph editor again and adjust this, that second key on the path travel and just type in divided by equals and then that value. I'm reducing it a little bit. That will actually um, clean up the uh, the footstep a little bit, certainly for the for the bits where he's walking straight. You know, you will still get a little bit, obviously, when, when he's uh, turning, because the feet have to move a different way. But again, now you notice up here, they go forward a bit more. You know, it's nice and clean then again. So, you know, it reduces an awful lot to manual work you have to do if you're going to do this by, from scratch. And then the final stage, really, is just to bake it back to the rig. As you can animate on top of it, you know, you can just get rid of the path system altogether. So for a quick example, I'm just going to take, say, to frame 100. And uh, again, it uses this option here, disabled view while baking, which just speeds things up a little bit. And I'm going to hit the, uh, I'm going to select the range here, actually, uh, 100. For the bake range, one, frame 1 to 100, and then I just hit bake path down to rig. And it's just going to play true and just key everything. It's quite quick with the viewport hidden on this rig anyway. It's a very light rig. And then um, that's it. I can just delete the path animation system. It'll ask me to confirm that and I say yes. And uh, if I show the controls now, and uh, that's it. He's walking along. So that's the full workflow. And as I say, for the for some of the more detailed stuff, you want maybe have a look at this one. 
and it'll give you a bit more detail on how to finesse things. But that is the workflow in a nutshell. Cheers!